Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. I've got a classic unboxing episode for you guys tonight. Three instruments, and I bought a big boy amp. There's a giant Marshall in here to grace our presence today. But first, let's start with this guy. I purchased this from the Mod Collection a couple of weeks ago because I just thought this was such a beautiful example. I wanted to see it in person because I couldn't believe how awesome the top on this one was because it had a sweet two-piece top. There was no pick guard stock from the factory. They had thrown some aged hardware on it, but I've reviewed enough 59 reissues, so I thought we would just unbox it here on the show. So, first off... Did they send me the wrong guitar? Because that's a Gibson USA case. That's kind of a bummer. At least we got a case. Let's go ahead and hope this is my beautiful... Oh, oh wow. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it's way better than I was even expecting. Holy cow. Look at this monster top, my friends. That is a great top. I mean, this is artificial lighting, too, and it's dancing just like this. Imagine getting it out into the sunlight. It's got that whole dirty lemon finish, but they've aged it just a little bit more than that, even on top of that. So it makes it look extra dark. I mean, you could say it has some greeny vibes to it. I mean, I already have one that's done up like that, if you're interested. That one's in my shop. But this thing is fascinating. Love that top. It looks like it does have like a little ding or something right here. I'm wondering if that's why it ended up in the demo shop, because that almost looks like it's a wood grain piece. You know, like a mineral deposit like right here, but it didn't take the finish right. It just kind of looks like a nail hole. I like it. It gives it character. But it has that straight down wood grain that you don't see too often. It's got the mixture of the rounded circles all on top of that super flamedness. I am very pleased with this purchase now i don't really care for the tuners that they put on here with the small buttons but i'm not going to worry about that too much our mod stamp is very light you have to get it in the light just to see it and my initial thoughts on this one were correct this one has a very light staining on the back and we also have a lot of mahogany dancing down here but you don't have any of that ugly binding bleed in my opinion i think sometimes they go a little bit too extreme i get it that original bursts yes they had some of that <laughs> phenomenon too but sometimes these reissues they go a little bit too far in my opinion but yeah as far as 59 reissues go i am enamored with this thing wow now i will say the hardware looked way more aged in the photos like in person it just kind of looks like the regular vos type job so if you were turned off by that in my initial look at this one i wouldn't worry about that too much the only thing i feel kind of cheated about is the case where's my lift and reissue <laughs> especially with something as beautiful as this Oh my goodness, they didn't even give me a COA booklet? They're cheaping out now? They're just giving us the, the paper on the inside. I wonder if that was a mistake, because that, that feels like a mistake to me. And I suppose I'll probably need this guitar to demo my new amp, which is what we're going to be unboxing next once this stuff gets away. Because this thing is big and heavy. So heavy, in fact, I'm going to need some energy. So let's cut to our sponsor of today's episode. The sponsor for today's episode is Magic Spoon, the keto-friendly, gluten-grain, and soy-free, low-carb cereal. If you're like me and loved eating cereal as a child, but later grew disgusted with how bad some of your favorites can actually be for you, you might have found yourself curious about this product too when seeing advertisements for it online. So they sent us four flavors to check out today, but they have eight core models and usually a limited edition flavor available direct on their website in one-time purchases or subscription-based savings plans. With zero gram sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, only four net grams of carbs, and 140 calories per serving. Let's give these flavors a try. After careful consideration, Fruity was my favorite of these four flavors. Second place goes to Frosted. That one had a great vanilla taste. But hey, if you don't really care about the whole sugar aspect, these things make great crispy treats too. If you're looking for something tasty and high protein to give your kids lots of energy. If you'd like to try some yourself, you can visit their website using my special link in the description. And be sure to use promo code TROGLY at checkout to get $5 off any order, which is backed with a 100% money back guarantee. That's enough snacking. Let's get back to unpacking. Back at the end of 2020, I reached out to Marshall and asked him, hey, can I buy a couple amplifiers direct from you guys? Because to be honest, I've always been kind of intimidated to buy one of these things because there's so much lore behind them. And generally, they're giant stacks. So I've always wanted this one, which I'm hoping arrived okay because there's big holes in my box. 
And let's get this thing out. So, after the long wait of waiting for this thing to come in from England, here it is. And it looks like it arrived safely at first glance. This is a Marshall Blues Breaker 1962 reissue. So, I mean, there's guys like Clapton that made these things famous, but I've always been a big combo amp fan. So to be able to get a legendary Marshall amplifier like this one has always been on like my bucket list of amps. Now, I often toyed with the idea of getting an original. I think those are what, 30, 40,000 plus dollars. So yeah, I was happy getting a reissue here, which if I remember correctly, these things are about $4,000 new. So they are not cheap by any means. It looks like uh, we've got some Celestian Greenback stock in this one. As far as the controls, on off, standby. Looks like speed, intensity, presence, bass, middle, treble, all this good stuff. Two volumes on this one with four inputs. So since I'm not much of an amp guy, I can't tell you too much about the history outside of the brief knowledge that I just told you about. So let's go ahead and uh, strum a couple of chords, see how this thing goes. <laughs> All right, let's get back to unboxing some guitars now. Okay, so these two, we've already seen one on the show. The other one's a different color, but I wanted to unbox this one again on the show with you guys because of the story behind this. So this is another one of those Gibson Theodores. We'll talk about the market reception of them in a second, but when this was still unreleased, I had somebody send me a photo of one of these. So while there were rumors of a brand new model that Gibson has never released before out there, I had actually saw it a little bit beforehand. And normally Gibson artist relations, they can help me get some of these harder to find guitars because hey, I make videos about them. It makes sense for them to help me get them. I mean, not all of them come direct from Gibson. I always buy everything. It's just sometimes it's nice to have that to fall back on for all of our enjoyments, right? But they had initially told me that I couldn't get one of these. So I was really thankful that this fan had offered me this one from this shop. So that is the story behind this one. So I do plan to keep one of these Theodores back because I think they're interesting. Whether they do a future USA release or not, I'm excited to see what else can come out of this new archive collection here. So this one. It's kind of a, a two-facer, I would say, because this side of the wood is just a tad bit darker than this side. And this shop had one of each color. I initially chose natural because that's the one I wanted to review. So now I've got two naturals and uh, unfortunately I'm missing one color in the set, but maybe I could uh, trade somebody or something like that. But this one has a lot of like movement and figuring within the body. So these are alder bodies in case you missed that review and demo. And they made 106 of each color for a total of 318. And the reason they did that and the reason why they launched it on March 18th is because that's when this patent drawing was dated, was 318, March 18th. So that's why they made so many of these. And in my opinion, I think they made a little bit too much. Because as I was telling you guys in the review, I had initially heard that there were going to be 40 of each color or 40 in all. And that's why you can't really report too much on rumored numbers because you never know how much it's actually going to be. But all the people that I know that have bought these, 
They all say the same things, that they love them, they're extremely vibrant and resonant when you strum them, you feel the vibrations in the neck, in the body. However, for sentimental reasons, I'll probably just end up keeping my review piece, so uh, if you're interested in a natural Theodore, that one's here. So I'm not going to tell you which one's in this box, but it's one of the ones that we didn't get to review. So now let's talk about the market reception of the Theodore and how the used market ended up pricing these things. At first, Theodores weren't selling so well. You could still buy them on Gibson's website. They sat a while on Musician's Friend. They were in Sweetwater shop for a, a good like eight hours plus, which is not very good on a release like this. But in the second half of the day, conveniently around the time when I released my video on this, I'm not saying I'm the one responsible for it, but they just all disappeared rapid fire. And then I saw the first one get posted for 10 grand and it disappeared. Another one came up. It disappeared. Another one disappeared all within those like seven to 10 K marks. And I was like, wow, people are paying that much. Like I figured they would sell for a thousand dollar premium or something like that, but they were going for more than I thought they would. But reverb was not reporting the prices like on their price guide. A lot of times that'll be live data feed. You look at the used ones and it'll show up and it'll show you what it is, but it never updated. Even to the day of recording this, it does not have any documented sales despite looking up sold listings you can see a lot of them have sold on the site but after the weekend people started to get these in flooded the market with it now they went back down at the time of recording they're about a 500 dollars premium and you've got your choice so if you want a theodore now's a good time to buy because once all the resellers have moved their inventory moved on to the next greatest thing i can see these things going back up this video is being edited about a week later of recording this. So as an update to that, all the low hanging fruit have pretty well sold out at this point. So now you're looking at normally between a $1,000 to a $2,000 premium, but sometimes you can still get a deal on one of these. So I would highly suggest if you want one of these Theodores, it's probably better to buy it sooner than later. But thankfully in the midst of all that, I actually found another one of these at retail price. So I just bought it because I kind of wanted a complete set and I wanted to see the other finishes here. So right here we have the cherry one. So that means I'm missing black, which seems to be like one of the more least favorite iterations out of all of them. But I've got to say, I kind of dig this cherry one simply because of how they did this walnut stripe down the center. I mean, had they had covered that over in a cherry finish too, it probably wouldn't have been as attractive. But this thing, I think it matches the vibes of when this thing would have came out. Like sure, it was late 50s, but this cherry finish gives it a real 60s aesthetic. So if this was really going to take over for the double cuts, I think this would have been a finish that we actually would have seen on one of these had it had came out. And now we have a red tree. So it can be like autumn. Where's the other one? It was also autumn and brown, but you know. <laughs> And I guess one more little update here. Apparently one of these actually left the factory without a pick guard on it. I was unable to view that Reddit thread, but somebody had sent it to me that uh, theirs had came without a pick guard, which I think would have been okay. But uh-oh, I've got my own factory boo-boo here. They've, my serial number didn't get stamped very well because that's supposed to be a leading seven that goes all the way down here, but it, it didn't get all the way there at least we've got the other ones we know what that one's supposed to be and since i'm the original owner of this one bought it brand new from an authorized dealer i guess i'm not going to worry about it too much but anyways troglodytes i hope you enjoyed tonight's episode get in the marshall amp a couple of theodores and a really cool 59 reissue don't forget to like comment and subscribe and we will catch you tomorrow on the next one take care